What's up everyone? The market is all over the place and earnings season is definitely showing some concerning signs for the market. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Tesla's earnings and how they are currently dumping in after hours. We're also going to, we're also going to look at some solid plays for tomorrow and other important information to know about. And on top of that, we're not going to waste any time. So Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, the overall market had another up and down day again. I should say today, though, was down and then up. So we had a big gap down early on, and then we started trading right back to the upside as there was some earnings that came out. You know, we had Morgan Stanley this morning and a couple others, and then we had Netflix last night, of course, which obviously didn't do too well. So that's part of the reason why the market dipped down. But as we went on, Netflix started to even out a little bit, and then we saw, you know, a lot of stocks in the market actually start to climb up. If we go look at the heat map, there was a lot of green. There was also a lot of red, though, like Disney and Tesla and a few other stocks. But, you know, looking at the banks, they were still recovering. And some tech stocks did good, like Apple and NVIDIA. But then others like Cisco and Meta started dipping down along with Netflix. So very mixed, I'd say, today overall. And that S&P 500 just kind of stayed the same. But, Mike, everybody is talking about Tesla earnings, of course. And what a, what could we guess? A big drop to the downside here. We blasted right through 180 here in After Hours. We're falling down. They had some bad margin numbers. And overall, Mike, these articles are uh, looking pretty bad here. You know it. And I already know a bunch of people are going to say, oh, my God, Tesla is having great revenue growth. Why is the stock falling? You know, this is manipulation. But <laughs> realistically, the earnings are more, uh, you know, there's more to it than that. So even though Tesla is having great revenue growth, their net income and in earnings dropped more than 20 percent compared to last year. And that is a pretty big problem. So it's like, you know, yes, they're having great revenue growth, but their earnings are not as great as it was last year. And it came in like right around expectations. So, you know, they have a little bit of a problem on their hands in the sense of like their net profit margins are shrinking and it definitely does not please shareholders how much the how much Tesla is just you know cutting the prices of their vehicles. Um, their current operating margin for this quarter was 11.4% versus 16% in the fourth quarter of last year and 19.2% in the first quarter of last year. So like that is a very big change. And Tesla actually just cut their prices again for the sixth time this year. Uh, their Model 3 price cut is 11% for this year. And uh, their Model Y price cut is 20% for this year. Those are those are big, Tom. Yeah, those are huge cuts there. I cannot believe the Model Y was cut by 20%. And I actually went to the Tesla website to check what the prices are right now. And look at this. You can get a base Model Y here for like $46,990. That's not bad, especially when you go look at other SUVs on the market of this caliber. You know, like other electric EVs, especially SUVs, are very expensive. Like go look at some BMWs and, you know, some of those, they can run up to $100,000 plus. And look at this. You can get a Model Y long range for like just under 50K. So really not bad there. It's good that they're cutting prices in a way, like they're trying to drive buyers in. And that's kind of what happens sometimes, you know, whenever uh, companies go throughout uh, their process, you know, it's like Tesla started out being pretty expensive. They're trying to get more affordable to drive in even more customers. And I think that that will help them over the long term, Mike. But in the short term, those margins are rough. And what, like you said, even though their revenue was kind of growing year over year, up 24%, that net income being down 24% was uh, pretty bad on the other side of things. Exactly. So let's take a look at that stock reaction. It definitely has not been good so far. Uh, Tesla closed right around that like $180 mark. And right now it is around like $173 and it is dropping by the minute. Of course, as the uh, earnings conference call comes out, that will bring in a lot of extra volatility. Uh, Tesla is one of the craziest stocks in the market. So you can never underestimate how this one will move, especially in after hours. But, you know, right now with the current price action and the current reaction, um, it is not looking bullish for Tesla. 
Yeah, it's really not. Like pretty much from that closing price to now, it's already down around 3.85%. And, you know, like you said, that they do have the conference call coming out. So keep in mind, maybe Elon will announce something big with like the uh, cyber truck or something like that. You know, you never know what they're going to talk about, but definitely not looking good right now. And, you know, I will say Tesla is actually kind of selling off today ahead of this event. They traded up throughout the day, but that drop last night was pretty rough. Exactly. And Tom, here is what my concern is. You know, like, yes, we had some big earnings lately, but like the 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 main entree is not until like, you know, like the next couple of weeks, you know, as we have Apple and Microsoft and Google and Meta and all those good stocks. But it's like, you know, if we look over like the past two days, when you have two tech powerhouses like Netflix and Tesla, both report earnings and both have somewhat bearish reactions it just makes you wonder you know what's next for companies like apple and microsoft and the rest of the tech stocks and i know each company is completely different when it comes to earnings but a lot of times you know like if earning like a lot of times like these stocks move somewhat together like you know like just uh, last year like we saw a bunch of stocks just getting destroyed on earnings and then you know a couple quarters ago we saw a bunch of stocks popping on earnings so it's like I think we're set for a very interesting and somewhat scary next couple of weeks. Yeah, I know. And, you know, the S&P 500 was mixed. Like, you know, Netflix did pretty bad. And then we dropped down and then we traded all the way back up. I'm curious to see what happens tomorrow. It seems like every single time we fall, we end up popping right back up. And I can't wait for Apple and a couple more. And talking about tomorrow, we even have American Express, Nokia, Taiwan Semiconductors, Mike, I will say shout out to the legend Icy Pro with Nokia for anybody who knows that. Let me know in the comments down below if you remember uh, that story at all. And then we have Procter & Gamble on Friday. So a lot of big stocks coming up still this week even. Not as influential as Tesla, of course, but Taiwan Semiconductors tomorrow will be pretty big too. All right, good stuff. And another thing that I really want to touch on since we are uh, back in earnings season is that you guys like... I know a bunch of people love to like, you know, trade earnings before the event, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with riding that momentum after the stock ready reports earnings. So for example, like if we go to Netflix, like, yes, you might've missed the initial report, but that's not a bad thing at all. Like, let's say Netflix has a very bearish outlook over the next couple of weeks. You know, you can still capitalize off of that earnings volatility, uh, even though the event's already over. A lot of times we see continuations over multiple days and weeks, uh, even after the stock reports earnings. So, you know, not only for this week, but the upcoming weeks, Keep in mind that, you know, there's still a lot of opportunity for good trades after earnings. Yeah, there definitely is. You know, looking at Netflix here, Mike, they actually ran down in after hours yesterday just below $300, which is a huge psychological resistance. I'm sure a lot of buyers came in there and bought the stock right back up. Probably did pretty well. A lot of algos and stuff like that. I'm really curious to see if this stock can maybe break below 314 and then maybe come down and retest 300. You know, that would be a huge level to go down and test again. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did, given all this negative price action. Good stuff. So Tom, there's one setup that I'm really watching right now, and that is Meta. I've been hawking this stock over the past year, and over the past couple of months, this stock went from $88 all the way up to like 200, over $220, right? So it's had a great run up, but I feel like we're finally to the point where it's like there is some serious resistance overhead, especially around that $220 range. And, uh, you know, I feel like we're starting to see a little bit of increased selling pressure and it's just overbought. So I'm really looking at Netflix uh, over like the next couple of days for, for a potential downside play. And of course, you know, with Tesla and Netflix having somewhat negative earnings reactions, that just makes it easier for other tech stocks to fall. It really does. And I think Meta is a great play to the downside. I know that you've been talking about it for the past couple of weeks and I've been hawking it too because of just how much we've been talking about it. And look at this amazing resistance hit here at 217. Look at all these other hits here from last week where we got a lot of negative price action plus these bad earnings. I think that'll be an amazing play to the downside. And talking about plays to the downside, I'm really watching AMD for another drop down. I know I talked about this one to the downside yesterday. This morning, I will say, Mike, it gapped down and then kind of faked out and came running right back to the upside on us. So I'm going to really watch this 80 
$8 support, $88 even down here is a pretty big level. If we get below there, I think puts could be huge here for the next few weeks. Perfect. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Teladoc. And I've touched on this stock a little bit yesterday. Um, it had a pretty good run uh, so far this week, and it has some really nice volume coming in and just price action. They had some good news yesterday with um, some new programs and just, you know, better, uh, more offerings, we should say, for their weight management and pre-diabetes programs. So, uh, you know, the stock's running up. It's very oversold, and it's just like a short-term setup that I'm looking at to the upside um it'll kind of do whatever it wants especially if this like news continues so it's just a stock i'm watching pretty closely yeah i think with that news they could do pretty well mike you know those uh weight uh watching type of things usually do pretty good you know people are always self-conscious about that and it's always uh you know people always want to benefit themselves so i would not be surprised if they started taking off a little bit more as well um my next play is actually to the upside as well and it's on adobe I will say uh, with tech stocks starting to fall down here in after hours, be a little bit careful with this one. They are also up here right at key resistance, right around 381. If we break out above 381.50 tomorrow, I think I'll look at more calls up. This stock has been pretty bullish the past few weeks, just like a lot of other uh, tech stocks. And if we do end up rejecting, though, you just have to watch the overall tech sector because, you know, if uh, Tesla drags everything down, bulls might be pretty hard to play tomorrow. All righty. Well, Tom, let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first one, we have DAL to the upside. Yeah, this stock ran up in a huge way. These uh, airlines have really been going since UAL reported. And if they end up breaking out above 36.15, I'll watch for calls of the upside. I really like this $36 resistance here. I've been watching that for the past few weeks. All right. With the next one, we have AMD to the downside. Yeah, poor AMD. So I know I gave my levels earlier down there at 88. Now that's being really, really safe. You know, I feel like that's a big support. If that breaks, we'll probably get a bigger sell off. But for all the scalpers out there, intraday here at the end of the day, there was a pretty big support right around 89.60. So if we get below there, watch for puts in the morning. And if we get below that, even watch 89 down here. If we break below 89, that could be another maybe a good move down to maybe test 88 then. All right. And then with the last one, we have Netflix, and this is uh, also to the downside. Yeah, poor Netflix here. If they end up falling under intraday support right around 318, I'll definitely look at puts. After that, watch that 314 support. If they break that, I feel like we might flush down to, to around 300 again. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys heard Tom. We have that downside level on Netflix, and we have that downside level on AMD. If they break below those levels, we are watching these stocks remove to the downside. And then we have that upside level on DAL. If it breaks above this, we're looking at it for a day trade upside tomorrow. But it is now time for the big money trade of the day. We had $855,000 go into SEAS. And more specifically, it is the SEAS 55 strike put options that expire on September 19th of 2023. Um, for those of you who don't know how options work, basically this is a, a, a trade betting that SEAS will fall over the next coming months. Um, the more the stock falls, the more millions they will make. SEAS is SeaWorld. I'm sure we all know this company by now. Um, the stock has actually been pretty weak and I would not be surprised if it kept falling. Uh, Tom, in terms of like important levels with this one, what are you seeing in terms of support and resistance? Yeah, so actually looking at it right now, it's kind of breaking a big support at the moment. Uh, there was a big recent move to the downside and we kind of tested this 53 to 54 area. Now today, we actually started breaking below there right you know, around the end of the day. So maybe these guys are trying to front run a big support break here, moving to the downside. I think that could be a great way um, a great trade that they're doing here. And I like that strike being in the money and everything like that. They're already set up, uh, you know, pretty well with that move down today. So if we break below there, there's another support where there's a lot of wicks right around 5150 to 52. If we watch that, then watch $50 after that. But those are some pretty good supports, I think, for the next couple of days. And I could see us maybe testing 52 tomorrow, especially if we get that downwards momentum continuing like we did today. 
All right, sounds good. So keep this one on your watch list. Uh, you know, someone's definitely betting that this stock has some room to fall over the next couple of weeks and months. But Tom, you know, I will tell you, you know, having, uh, having <laughs> looking, I, I guess having Tesla and Netflix passed us, Netflix and Tesla earnings passed us, um, I definitely am seeing some concerning signs as both of them dumped in like a decent way. Um, as you mentioned, Netflix like tried to hold up like a little bit, um, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't all that great. So I am a little bit bearish heading into the rest of this week. And, you know, I will say this is not the ideal way that most tech stocks would have liked to start earnings season. Yeah, definitely not. And tomorrow we have Taiwan Semiconductors in the morning. That's going to be a huge one there as well. I know they're a, a huge stock, obviously. TSM's the ticker on the U.S. exchange for anybody wondering. They actually took a big tumble last night with Netflix too. So I'm going to be watching them the next few days. And that move down with Tesla, Mike, is scary. And it really brings into light some of those articles that we've been looking at over the past couple of weeks. You know, we've been seeing shorts coming in here at all time highs on the market. A lot of analysts were expecting big drops during this earnings season. The banks kind of made people feel like, hey, maybe this earnings season is going to go well. But now that we see these two companies report, I don't know, Mike, I I'm definitely more mixed now than I was after those banks reported. No doubt. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll see our videos recommended to you more often. And last but not least, huge shout out to today's Discord member of the day, Dylan S201. You've been in the chat only for a week now, but you've been uh, pretty active so far. So definitely make sure to keep it up. And thanks for all that awesome activity. Besides that, let's have an amazing end to the week.